Okay, this is the site of another metro park. I cannot think of the name of it. It's gonna be a fairly small one. You can see they're still under construction. Alright, this is I guess what they call the stage. This is where we're all meeting at. It's on Roar R O H R Road in Lockbourne. It's not a big place, my understanding this place is gonna be more for events. It's either going to be our 22nd or 23rd, depending on how quick we get things going. I'm looking at Steve Studeman now, who does all the planning and design for the park. But uh, we've got two parks underway. Many of you were on the hike at Great Southern about a year ago. We've got two park managers currently competing to see who gets to open first. <laughs> Melissa Turpening, she's here. She's just not standing here. She's our park manager here. And uh, Kevin Schatz is our park manager at Great Southern, and both crews are working seven days a week to see who gets to open first. I wish I could tell you which one's going to open first, but our goal is to get general public into both of these facilities sometime in 2024. So you'll be invited to the ribbon cutting, so the jokes don't change, so you got to laugh when I tell them at the grand opening as well. But uh, Bank Run Metro Park. We'll get into why we call it that and what's going on here, but where we're standing now is a, a, a YMCA camp that started a long time ago in the 30s and 40s, really is a place for the South End Y to get kids a little further out. So nature exposure, all of that, it really took off. They started building more and more facilities, then it became a residential camp. There was actually an observatory over there where they did some uh, stargazing and whatnot. Then it turned into much more of a, uh, I don't want to say commercial, but they started building facilities for large events like festivals, overnighting, uh, meetings, weddings, different things like that. And then as things ebb and flow, the YMCA was tightening their belt a little bit. Uh, long story short, and thank heavens, I hear a little bit of a rumor that they put a for sale sign up down here, called the director of the YMCA and said, hey, we'll buy it. And he kind of, I've known him for 25 plus years. He kind of chuckled and said, no, Tim, we've got offers on the table. We, you know, you guys won't be able to move fast enough. And I said, Tony, we can close in 30 days. Steve's with me. And, and Steve's like, Tim, you can't say that. I said, okay, Tony, we'll close in 20 days. <laughs> and he laughed. Steve, how many days did we close in? Less than 30 days. Uh, Ellen here, one of our former board members, if you don't know it, Metro Parks, we don't work for the governor, we don't work for the mayor, we don't work for the county commissioners, we work for a board of park commissioners. Probate judge appoints them. I will say this wholeheartedly. We are the most nimble form of government you will ever experience. We work under the wisdom and leadership of our Board of Park Commissioners, and uh, we can move fast. So in other words, there were developers, there was warehouse developers, just like that, wanting to buy this land. There was residential developers, it, and I think the Y told me a little bit of a lie. They told me uh, Obetz was interested in buying it as well, then Obetz tells me, yeah, we buy it, but we don't have the money. But we were able to purchase this really with not much intent, knowing it's a very special piece of land. You'll get to see it today. Well, as we're starting to develop plans for that, we start trespassing a little bit to our west. Uh, former board member Tad Jeffrey, he granted me all the authority blessed on anybody to trespass on any land at all if you're on Metro Parks uh, business. That's a uh, Tad way of doing it. So we walked around the quarry that's over there. 
Long story short, we reach out to the quarry and said, hey, uh, are you interested in selling? And it's Shelly and Sands, which is not Shelly Materials, who were doing different. And the gentleman I talked to said, no, we're a family-owned business. We don't sell land. So we just keep talking and keep talking and keep talking. And next thing you know, 70 acres, no, six, 106 acres we purchased here August of this year. So now we have the makings of what's a metro park. So then, and, and you guys can mill around or look at the drawings. So one of the things we're challenged with in metro parks, by the way, pause, Melissa Turpening, best park manager in the district. <laughs> <laughs> uh, is we get a lot of demand about 13 million people a year want to come to your metro parks well in a, not in addition but part of that 13 million are people that want large special events reunions events 5ks weddings different things and we work them into our system pretty well well like yesterday larry how many people we have up at glacier ridge 3,500 people were at Glacier Ridge yesterday. We closed roads down. Basically, if you weren't running a 5K, you had no business being there. So the geniuses that I get to work with come up with the idea, Tim, we should have a park that we design for big, giant events. And it should be bank run. So we're going to develop this park as a park, but it's going to be where we drive new special events, maybe some existing special events, uh, you know, we know this can accommodate thousands of people. So some of our older events, we might push this way. We'll push some newer events this way. One of my goals is to really engage the city of Columbus schools down here so they can do larger events here where they normally are priced out of events if they have to go to a private entity to rent space. So this is going to be built to handle large events. If you're at all familiar, there were several buildings here six months ago. They were old log, and I put that in quotes, structures that they used for residential cabins. They were repurposed logs that were at uh, Rickenbacker for a while that were repurposed from homes that used to be in the south end. There was a lot of dry rot. They, they were not savable buildings. There was a park office over there that's gone. So really what we did is we kept the good big structures that we're able to build a park out of, and you can see kind of the master planning idea. Now, looking at pictures is kind of boring. We're going to walk around and we're going to walk and talk. Throughout the line, you can find either listen to me, I'll be up front making a lot of noise. Melissa will be mixed in somewhere. She knows what's going on here. Steve knows what's going on. Pretty much anybody in the logo can tell you what's going on here except for Renee. <laughs> uh, but we're excited. We're going to go on about, Melissa, do we say about a mile and a half, two mile walk? pretty flat. There's one hill we'll roll down. There's one hill we'll roll up. It gets a little tight at spots. But if you've been on hikes with us before, like the Bank Run or 100 Acre Wood, those would be like a five on difficulty. This is more like a three if it's even a three. Any questions before we go?
I believe the wide built that for their executive director to live in. At least I know their previous previous executive director did live there. It was built in the late 80s, early 90s. Great house. So DJ gets to work eight hours a day at South Audubon and then 16 hours a day when he comes home. So he works really hard to take care of it. We're working with Lockhorn just downstream. There's a big commercial drive in here. They're in the city of Columbus. The city of Columbus is requiring either a sidewalk or multi-use trail. They're going to put multi-use trail in. So Lockhorn will be connected to here. Then with all the development Obetz is doing, they're going to have a trail system. So it'll tie into that. Then once you get into that system, it's a hop, step, and a jump to the trails at Three Creeks. So to answer your question, yes. Uh, we've realized anywhere we do something, if we can connect it via trail, our customers are happy. So now I apologize to everybody in the front of the line. You're now in the back of the line. Run! 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 This is what they call the slide right here. I guess back in the day it was a slide. This is what he was calling was the slide, and they were using it as a slide back when the Y had this property. I think he said if you look on YouTube, Granddaddy Slide, and they'll show that. So I'm gonna have to look it up. Maybe I'll find a link to it, and I'll put it down in the description. Now, we were up there. Now we're down here in the floodplain.
Scioto River. To the right, go upstream, and I'll take you back into the city of Columbus. going that way. I like to be in the back so I can videotape, but I miss a lot of the conversation he's saying. But he was saying this floodplain, this lowland we're in, they're not going to develop because it is a floodplain. So it's going to be wet a lot possibly flooded so though they own this down here he said they're not going to develop this because it is a floodplain doesn't mean there won't be a trail down here but that might be the extent of anything down here now they're climbing back up the hill there going back out of the lower land area got a little bridge up here Thank you so much for coming. Thank you. Hey, I'm going to walk with you real quick. Now this is a quarry. Over here on the left.
Okay, this is the quarry. And they said it's roughly around 60 to 70 feet deep. And there is, it's way over on the other side, but there is an, an osprey nest down here. But it's over on the far side. Pretty nice. I'm going to assume this trail we're on is going to be an out and back because it looks like the quarry is active over on that side. So I doubt we're going to walk through there. So I'm going to assume this is going to be an out and back. Some of the group behind me and some of them up here in front of me. We got the side of the river down there on the right. And we got the core over here on the left. Okay, not sure if I got it at the beginning of the video, but the first section of uh, Bank Run that they got is roughly around 60 acres. And then they acquired this quarry, which is another 106. So that would be roughly around 166 acres for this park when it's done. Which he says is mainly going to be for events. But it does look like it's going to have a little bit of hiking trails. Watch for this hole. <laughs> Don't slip in it. I'll say a few more things about this quarry right here. He was saying that it's going to be open to canoeing, kayaking, fishing. And the trail that we were going around, I did. I said earlier, it's probably an out and back because of that over there. But he said the trail is going to eventually go all the way around this pond. And they want to make it to where they can have five K's down here. So it'll probably be somewhere around 3.1 mile. I don't see it going around here, but it might involve some other trails down here. But like I said, he said it's going to be open for canoeing, kayaking, and fishing. And a 5K trail around it. These are cool here. One, a larger one, and a smaller one, and a larger one. Maybe some type of game they had here for YMCA when they had this. Pretty cool. Now he was saying the reason it's called Banks Run is because it's on course the banks, and then the run is because they plan on like I said earlier, making a trail around here for 5Ks. So, hence the name Banks Run. That's the name, the reason behind the name, Banks Run Metro Park.
this property it is about a one-page purchase contract there are no contingencies there are no dedications there are no memorializations so from a purely legal perspective when Metro Parks bought this we could have bulldozed everything and put a sheets gas station on this property I mean it the, the Y left no contingency we didn't think much of that because we know our contingency is it's going to be natural public space for we that doesn't bother us but 
as we start to do our digging and look into the history and read this, I, I read this and this doesn't look like, this looks like they just named it after Cap Hoover, who was the original director here, had a lot to do with the camp, made sure it stayed healthy, viable, and all that. Very important. This rock will never go anywhere. But then we start to hear from people who have been around a while that Cap is buried right here. <laughs> and I can't find anything that proves he's buried here. I can't find anything that he's not buried here. And I talked to some you know, old timer, guaranteed me he's buried here, and then an old timer that tells me he's not buried here. So the facts I'm going on, I was told that this was dedicated when they buried him, but I have a picture in my office of Cap Hoover standing right here. Unless they took his dead body, put a board behind him so he was rigid to take his picture. I'm pretty confident Cap is not buried here. So, if all of us, yeah, do some, yep. We, yeah, we hope that the new sewer pipe doesn't go through Cap's grave. By the way, that was a joke. I'm sorry, Cap, if you're hearing me now. But, uh, as with every park we have, there's always stories, legacy, and I think this will just go to that. Every park we have, I guarantee it has people buried in it, whether they're Native Americans all the way up to old pioneer cemeteries.